judged by his word in first Corinthians 14 verse 2 that for anyone who speaks in tongues in a tongue does not speak to men but to God so if you are going to train yourself to be praying in tongues there is a lady who came to me yesterday and I told her the Holy Spirit is con is convicting me to tell you that uh, you started training yourself to pray in the tongues at least one hour one full hour before you pray otherwise and ask me what is it and I told her yes so I realized uh, that an, a level she has not been able to attain it to get that so there is a day I was in prayers and I was in very I was very depressed I was very 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 depressed because of the radio depressions that was somewhere uh, in the year 2020 and I was so depressed and I went before the presence of the Lord uh, to a certain prayer place I go to and when I started to pray I didn't have the ones in my mind because I was so stressed I was under depression and uh, I heard the Holy Spirit speaking with a whisper pray in tongues I prayed from around 11 a.m. all the way to around 6 45 p.m. in the evening in tongues <coughs> when you pray in tongues tongues speaks to God himself so I'm saying do this and God will hear you pray in tongues something else that you require for God to hear you for God to hear you John 9 verse 1 look here the Bible says eh? we know that the God does not listen to sinners <laughs> God does not listen to sinners so if you know you are a sinner and you have been praying that it tells you God has not been listening you, and that is why somewhere it is recorded in the book of Isaiah and if you it, God asked them who answered these prayers you say I answered we know that God does not listen to sinners. What sin are you struggling with? Before you go to make your requests, before you go to make your prayer, first of all, start by addressing that sin that you are struggling with. And if possible, even sacrifice for it. For instance, there is people who struggle with sexual immorality. And then you go before the presence. You want to tell me God will pay attention to you. These people who don't pay tithes. And you come before the presence of God. And God says you are a robber, a thief. Will God listen to you? These people who have this struggle of uh, pornography watching. And you come before the God. What images will be running in your mind? These people who always speak lies. You must know the sin that you struggle with. Before you pray, first of all, deal with it. For here he says, we know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Do you want God to listen to you? Then develop godliness. Paul says, Godliness and contentment is great gain. And here this man says, This is a person that God will listen to. The one who is godly and does the will of God. There are many people who are godly, but they don't do the will of God. The way says these things work in tandem. You must be righteous and do the will of God. First Peter 3 12. First Peter 3 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But his ears are attentive to their prayers. Who? The righteous. Wow. Proverbs 17 verse 29. Proverbs 17 verse 29. And this verse is becoming prominent. Huh? 15 29. The Lord is far from the wicked, 
but he hears he hears the prayer of Elisha's he hears so when you are Elisha's person and you make a prayer God hears so if you are not righteous no matter how many prayers you live making God is not interested with your prayers he is interested with you praying on your righteous Psalm 34 verse 15 he is put it this way the eyes of God are on the righteous his ears are attentive to the cry <laughs> verse 17 the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them he delivers, he delivers them from all their trouble are you struggling with God hearing you in the praise of prayer in the praise of prayer you pray and you come out of the praise of prayer and you are not very sure you are not certain you are not guaranteed that God had you that God had you there is a way you can put yourself like Daniel and you pray even if you do not know the evidence to use him acting like that that's correct makanda magudu yari mazena hohebe makanda bohi heki kiribieta izaidi moha he says what righteousness that when the righteous prays his ears are attentive and these are the areas as believers we don't see them of importance because we are after miracles signs and wonders you want to come to me i touch you receive and then you are manifesting some funny funny bra 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 god can give you everything that you want and you forfeit your soul how will it benefit it is much better to have a good relationship with god than to have all the wealth of the world because you can have all the wealth of the world and you go to hell like the rich man of Lazarus. we are talking about the god hearing us yes he when you make a prayer and you're righteous his eyes are attentive what are you saying we must bring ourselves to the standard in which we can commune with God not talk talk to God yeah? but we can commune we can communicate with God that when you start making your requests your petitions your prayers God commands an angel to start writing down on your praying and he says that fire be brought in my office as a, a matter of urgency okay these are the things that you are uh, absconding in our search for spiritual uh, for spiritual life in prayer mountains you are there 40 days 21 days you are doing everything but there are things you have avoided eh, that would have made your process eh, quicker and easier. Psalms 18, verse 6, another thing that you require. In my distress, I called, I called to the Lord. Yes. I cried to my God for help. From his temple. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. That my cry came before him into his ears. Why? because God was in his temple so this man was praying was crying to God in the temple of God and God was inside that temple so when you pray your prayers in the temple of God 
God hears. When God is in the temple and you are in the temple, you don't ask me. The Bible says, our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Look here, first Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Verse 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you receive from God? Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse 22. And when you two are being built together to be adoring in which God lives by His Spirit. How do you make your body the temple of God? Romans 12 verse 1. Therefore offer your body they have hired you brothers in view of God's mercy in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and present to God this is your spiritual act of worship when you pray to God through his temple meaning you have been able to transform your body into a temple of God and then you pray when you are a temple of God because God dwells in his temple. When you make that prayer, God hears what you are saying. And your prayer comes into his ears. Many the people, we are praying to God. When we have not dedicated our bodies to him as a living sacrifice, to turn our bodies into a temple of the Holy Spirit where God dwells through his spirit. Is your body the temple of God? If you want God to hear you, you need to dedicate your body as a temple of the Holy Spirit to enable God to come and dwell inside you. Because he had made a commitment to Solomon. Huh? Bruce Solomon, second Chronicles. There's something God said when he was speaking uh, uh, to Solomon. Mm -hmm. The Lord appears in Second Chronicles chapter number seven and verse eleven. When Solomon finished the temple of the Lord and the royal palace, and he succeeded in carrying out all he had in mind to do in the temple of the Lord and in his own palace, the Lord appeared to him at night after completing the temple. I have heard your prayer because of the temple and I've chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices and the man of God Simon Peter says in chapter number 2 first Peter chapter number 2 and verse 5 you also like living stones that have been built up into a spiritual house to be a holy place to the offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ so you must yourself as a person become a temple of God so that now you can start offering sacrifices that are acceptable he says let me repeat again I have heard your prayer and I have chosen this place for myself as a temple for my for sacrifices so when the temple was completed and Solomon prayed you can lead the prayer of Solomon when he completed the temple then he prayed in the prayer from 2 Chronicles chapter number 6 the whole prayer of Solomon all the way to verse 42 God came and said the prayer you have made through this temple I have heard them are you a temple of the living God it is until you become the temple of the living God. That is when, because we pray through this body, we pray through the temple, God starts to hear when you become a temple of God. Not just be getting born again. That's why you keep on getting born again, you backslide. And this January, you get born again, you backslide. From the next January, you get born again, you backslide. You are always being baptized, baptized, baptized. You are not transforming. Why? Your body has not been changed. It is still the old nature body. So whatever in you has gotten born again is your soul. But your body is still attached to the world. The next thing you require 
for God to hear your prayers is when you pray in truth. When you pray in truth. Psalm 17 verse 1. Listen here. When you pray in truth. Hear, O Lord, my righteous prayer. Listen to my cry. Give ear to my prayer. Why? It does not arise from deceitful lips. Psalm 145 verse 18. Uh, 145 verse 18. The Bible says, eh, The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. In truth. You shall know the truth and truth the Lord will set you free. This is the one that my father is seeking. Those who shall worship in the spirit and truth. Look at that. Whenever you stand before God and you know the word you have right. So your mouth has spoken lies. They are a deceitful rips. And you make prayers through the same rips that have uttered deception. That have uttered lies. Those prayers, God says He doesn't hear. But He says, when you remove lies from your mouth, then you pray. The Bible says He pays attention to those who call on Him in the truth. The problem is, nowadays we have made lies accommodative. Even when you stand before God, you don't confess. How many people's lives have been affected because of a lie that you spoke about another person? Every lying lips are a detestable before his ears whenever you start to make a prayer and you know you are good in malice in remembering in speaking stories about the others you are good in finger pointing and accusation fault finding Yani, your mouth speaks not the truth. Then you started to pray using the same mouth. God doesn't listen. That is why we encourage people to make a covenant with your mouth. Yes. That is why Paul in Colossians chapter number 4 uh, and verse 6 he said let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with the salt. There is something we call a covenant of salt. That is the one that enables your mouth to speak truth. Even when you want to lie, it does not lie. It is covenanted to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. So that you may know how to answer everyone. When you pray, governed by truth in your mouth, God listens. Mm -hmm. Psalms 145 verse 19. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. Those who fear him. He hears their cry and save them. He hears their cry and save them. Who? Those who, who, who fear him. So the point is fear of God. Mm, we used to be told when we were in school that the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But they say that if those who fears him, he hears their cry. Do you fear the Lord? Nowadays we are very complacent, very familiar with God. We have gotten used to processes of God. Nowadays we are working for God depending on uh, on what? On experiences and excuse. For the gifts and the calling of God do not come with repentance. 
and they are irrevocable. So there are people who are serving God in that area with new experience. You get that? These skills. I will detach somebody this way and they'll fall. So you can it, it is an experience. So you are no longer in the fear of God. You have gotten used. You are now very familiar. You are in complacency. When you make your prayers, when you are being governed by the spirit of complacency and not the fear of God, the Lord does not hear you. He hears, he says, he fulfills Psalms 145 verse 19. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry. Who? Those who hear him. So if you fear the Lord, pray for him to hear. Another person that the God hears is a giver. A giver. Psalms, sorry, <laughs> Acts chapter number 10 about Cornelius. Chapter number 10, let us read uh, uh, verse 4. Let us read from verse, uh, from verse, uh, verse 2. He and all his family were devout. Many people are a devotee of God. You are always in the Kesha. And God fearing. We have talked about the fear of God. Uh -huh. He gave generous rape to those in need and he prayed to God regularly. So we are talking about the prayer that God hears. They must be accompanied by other things. Look at it in verse 4. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, You are prayers and gifts to the poor. So the prayers of Cornelius were being backed by giving. Uh -huh. Have come up as a memorial offering before God. Has come up as a memorial offering before God. Verse 1. Verse 1. It says, That mm one. -hmm. Equal happy. And he said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Do you want? God to hear your prayers. Be a giver to the needy. To the needy. And I always tell people, one of those who are a needy are a servant of God. The Lord told me, your prayers have been heard. <coughs> oh. And and what has happened is Praise Jesus Christ. What has happened is the Lord has heard your prayer because they were being backed by, 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 by your giving. So whenever you give and then you pray, you first start by giving then you pray. God hears. Can you look at it in Isaiah 58? Isaiah 58 verses, uh, verse 6. Verse 6. It is not this kind. It is not kind of fasting I have chosen. To lose the chains of injustice and untie the cons of the yoke. To set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry? And to provide the poor renderer with the shelter? When you see the naked to call him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your right to break forth like condone and your enemy will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will, be go, will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your real hand. Then you will call. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and you will say, here I am. Here I am. When you do what? When you become a giver. When you participate in giving. Become a child.
charitable person you are making God to open his ears to you did you talk about the heart let me give you just one scripture about the heart in Jeremiah 29 from Jeremiah 29 and verse 10 verse 12 then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart I will be found by you because of and will bring you back from captivity. So it is about the heart. We have talked about it uh, when, uh, when we were in uh, Psalm 66, verse 17 to 20. When we talked about uh, the condition of your heart. So you can see, if you are not a giver, then uh, uh, the, the ears of God are not quick in being attentive to your prayer. Hey. Let me give you another point that uh, you require for God to hear you. In Luke 1, 13, Luke chapter number 1 and verse 13. Luke 1 and verse 13. Can we read it together? Okay. But the angel said to me, Don't be afraid, Zachariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your prayer has been heard. What was the man of God doing? Verse 8. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as a priest before God, he was chosen by rot. According to the custom of the priesthood, to go in the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembly worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of God appeared to him standing at the light side of the altar of incense. Period. For God to hear your prayers, raise to him the altar of incense. Make your prayers through the altar of incense. In the wilderness, and God was speaking to Moses. He told him in Exodus chapter number 30, verse 1, Make an altar of acacia wood for burning incense. Do you have that altar of burning incense? When you are burning incense, then you pray through it. Eh? We will go back. It is to be a square, a cubit long and a cubit wide, and two cubits are its own of one piece. We, uh, okay. Verse 7. Aaron must burn fragrant incense on the altar every morning when he tells the rams. He must burn incense again when he's right, when he writes the ramp at the twilight so that incense will burn regularly before the Lord for the generations to come. Do not offer on this altar any other incense or any burnt offerings or grain offering, and do not pour a drink offering on it. Once a year, Aaron shall make atonement on its own, on its horns. This annual atonement must be made with the brand of the atoning sin offering for the generation to come. It is most story to the Lord. In Act, sorry, in the book of Revelation, chapter number 8, verse 3, another angel with a golden censer came and stood at the altar, the altar of incense. Uh -huh. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar. That is the altar of incense because then the altar was bronze altar. So these golden altars we call the altar of incense. Huh? Before the room, the smoke of the incense together the prayers of the saints went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the sense of it to the fire from the altar and held it on the earth and there came pills of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning and another quick. So you see, what made these people's prayers become before God is because they were being orphaned through the altar of incense. Do you have an altar of incense? When Zechariah was at the altar of incense, burning incense, and the people were outside praying, what did the angel tell Zechariah? Your prayers have been heard. For God to hear you, to hear your prayers, for do you kindly lay him an altar of incense? It is a golden altar. 
And I like that enables God here. People's prayers is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Another thing is vows. Psalm 50, 14. These are the keys to God hearing us. Do you have a tendency to not pay in your vows? Your prayers get broke. Psalm 50, verse 14. Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Number one. Fulfill your vows the most high. Number two. And call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Number one, about that giving. Jonah, he prayed for three days and three nights. God was not paying attention. And three he came to Jonah 2, verse 9. He said, But I, the song of that giving, will sacrifice to you what I have found. I will make good salvation comes of the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah on the dry land. If you want God to hear you, could you kindly be a thanksgiver? And the other giving here is not your conversation. It is an offering you take. For he says, sacrifice thank offerings to God. Number two, could you kindly fulfill your vows? Because people who jump vows, even if you keep on praying, it would have been better if you don't make a vow. Hannah in the first summer chapter number one look here verse 12 and as okay verse gap verse 10 in the bitterness of soul Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord and she made a vow saying Oh Lord Almighty, if you want me to look upon your servant misery and remember me and not forget your servant but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no reason will ever be used on his head. And she kept on praying to the Lord through now the vow and observe her mouth. Hannah was praying in heart, in spirit, in her heart and her lips were moving but her voice was not heard. So she was praying in spirit. Early thought she was drunk and said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been in drink wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying out. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Any answered, Go in peace and may God of Israel. Grant you what you have asked of him. Look at verse 20. At verse 19. Are the next morning? They arose and worshiped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Rama. And he came and lay with Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel. Say, because I asked the Lord for him. David is saying, if you sacrifice dance offering and then you fulfill your vows, if you call God, He will answer. He will hear your prayer. You cannot. And Jonah repeatedly says, with thus giving, I will sacrifice what I have vowed. Meaning, when you are paying your vows, you are supposed to accompany it with an offering for thanksgiving. They come together. This is your vow. Then include something small to thank God for. Hannah had been praying many prayers for many years and Eli had never attended to her. But the day she made the vow, the day Eli saw her and told her, may God grant you what you have requested of him. And God remembered that when she made a vow. So if you want God to hear your prayers, be a thanksgiver. Be a thanksgiver. A sacrifice of thanksgiving. Number two, fulfill your vows. Do you make vows and you don't make them come to pass? 
when you avoid those things I'm teaching you today here, you just make God deaf concerning you. Concerning you. For today, let us close with one last thing. The name of Jesus. If you want God to hear your prayers, you must make them in the name of Jesus. You must make your prayers in the name <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Any other prayer outside the name of Jesus, God does not hear. Can John 14, 13. Can we read? John 13. Uh, uh, where? John 14. Verse 13. This is Jesus himself who is speaking. And I will do whatever you ask in my name. So that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name. And I'll do it. Look at that in John 16. Okay. John 16, verse 23. 23. Okay. Let us read uh, verse 23. In one day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you receive. And your joy will be complete. Any prayer you make, not through the name of Jesus Christ, doesn't come to the ears of God. Jesus said, from now on, any prayer must be in the name of Jesus. Then it means there is something invested in the name. So you are always making your prayers in the name of Jesus, but they never come to pass. Because there is a secret hidden in the name of Jesus. And it is recorded in Malachi 1 verse 11. Malachi 1 11. How are you supposed to be with the name of the Lord so that when you make a prayer in the name of the Lord, God hears. Malachi 1 verse 11. He says, My name will be great among the nations from the rising to the setting of the sun. In every place, incest and pure offerings will be brought to my name because my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord Almighty. Okay. Verse what? Verse... Mm -hmm. Let us continue verse 12. But you profane it, the name of Jesus. You profane that name. <coughs> By saying of the Lord's table, it is divine, and of its food, it is contemptible. And you say, hold the burden, and you sniff at it contemptuously, says the Lord Almighty. When you bring injured, crippled or deceased animals and offer them as a sacrifice should they accept them from your hands says the Lord cast as a cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and he vows to give it but then sacrifice a blemished animal to the Lord for I am a great king says the Lord Almighty and my name is to be feared among the nations Malachi chapter number 3 and verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord talked with each other. And the Lord listened and he had a scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. Moses had said, God will not say somebody I have not seen who uses the name of the Lord in vain. You must be in a position whereby you are permitted to use the name of Jesus Christ. They came and the demon told them, Jesus will know. And can we just go and read it? You can see. It is not just making prayers. It is not just making prayers. It is making prayers according to the way it is prescribed. Don't just use the name of the Lord. You might use the name of the Lord and you'll be challenged. Acts chapter number 19 verse 13 Some Jews went around driving out evil spirits Tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus Over those who were demon possessed They would say in the name of Jesus Whom Paul was preaches I commanded to come out Seven servants gather a Jewish chief priest We are doing this One day the evil spirit answered them Jesus I know And I know come out Paul But who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit Jumped on them And overpowered them all he gave them such a beating that they went out of the house naked and bleeding. How do you use the name of the Lord?
Have you ever made an offering for the name of the Lord? Do you have you honored? Because if you pray in the name of the Lord and you have never honored that name, then the name doesn't work for you. And how do you honor the name of the Lord? Is by bringing to him incense and pure offering. According to Malachi 1 verse 11. When you have brought pure, you have honored the name of the Lord with incense and a pure offering, then apply the name of Jesus in your prayers. God listens those prayers. Because God has put the power in the name of Jesus Christ. For today, the last point for God to hear your prayers, you we all know it. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Faith. Make your prayers when you are full of faith. Huh? Faith. We say, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who are necessary seeking. Faith. You cannot convince God in your prayers when you are outside faith. God hears. God hears. Jesus himself said it. In Mark 11, about when you making prayers in the faith that God listens. He said in Mark 11, verse 22, have faith in God. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, and all that, whenever we make our prayers in the umbrella of faith, faith pushes that prayer to the ears of God. And that is why James wrote it in James 1 and verse 6. But when he asks, he must believe and do not doubt because he doubt is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double man and stable in all he does. You must, if you want God to hear your prayers, apply faith in your prayers. Pray Jesus Christ. Is God going to hear us from now? He did. I leave you with this scripture of Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter number 5 and verse 7. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with around with round cries and tears that we all do today. To the one who could be saving from death, and he was hand. And he was hand because of his reverent submission. Because of his reverent submission. Jesus was not an he came to me one week ago or two. And he was telling me, Joel, do you think God was listening to me because I was the Son of God? No, it is because I knew how to revere the word of God. I heard that it was in night. But the reason why Jesus, God was listening to him very quickly is because Jesus knew how to revere the word of God. So here, the Bible teaches us the reason why Jesus was hung is because when he was making his prayers, he was in a reverent submission. There is and God will give you his ears, he will listen to you. May God bless you. May God do you good as you approach God this time around with confidence for he will hear this time around. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. May God hear me. May God hear you are praying, you are groaning, and your petitions May each and every prayer you have made come to his presence in the strong mighty name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. We do pray 
and believe. Amen. For any clarification, any correction, please contact me through those numbers which are on your screen. Let us work together for we are living in perilous times. We need each other. We need one another. Let us be each other's brother, brother's keeper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. My names are Apostle Joe Pame of Amazing Grace of Jesus Christ Center. I leave you under the mercy of God and under the umbrella of Amazing Grace of Jesus Christ himself. May the Lord be with you and may the Lord bless you. Shalom. Amen.